Golden Park Planning Commission for May 26, 2021. Commissioner Garrido, would you mind uh, leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure thing, Chairman. Go ahead and please mute your microphones, placing your right hand over your heart, face the flag if you have one there, um, and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Commissioner Garrido. Um, and to, is, um, is Esther on the call today? I'm sorry, I was on mute. Esther is out uh, this evening, so Perfect. I will be taking roll call. Perfect. Rod, uh, do you mind calling roll? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Garrido? Present. Vice Chair Borges? Here. Chairman Sands? Here. Thank you so much, Ron. No problem. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and move on to public communications. Um, Ron, have we received any communications or uh, any uh, comments from um, the public uh, on anything in regards to what's not on the agenda? Uh, no, we have not received any uh, requests for public uh, communications. Great. Thank you so much, Ron. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and close public communications and move on to the consent calendar. I move to adopt the action minutes from April 14, 2021. Do we have a second? Second. Is that uh, Commissioner Borges? Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, Ron, uh, do you mind calling roll? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Garrido? Yes. Commissioner Borges? Yes. Chairman Sands? Yes. Uh, motion passes. Uh, action minutes have been adopted. Going to go ahead and move on to set matters, public hearing. Uh, we're going to start with um, item number two, the, the request. Uh, Request for consideration to consolidate two existing single family lots within the R3 multifamily residential zone for the construction of 12 lots for the construction uh, of 12 lots of 11 attached condominium townhomes and one common area lot pursuant to table 152.10 in the city's municipal code. Location 13266 Ramona Boulevard, applicant Leo Wu Archfield Incorporated case number PR 20 33 and TTM 83328. Mr. Ron Garcia. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Associate Planner Melissa Chipris will be providing the presentation. Thank you. Go ahead, Melissa. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, good evening, Honorable Chair and members of the Commission. Uh, so, again, before you uh, is a request for consideration of a tentative track map uh, to consolidate two existing single family lots for the creation of 11 attached condominium townhomes and one common lot area located at 13266 Ramona Boulevard. Uh, the project is exempt from the provisions of the California Environmental Quality Act to CEQA pursuant to Article 19, Section 15332 infill of the CEQA guidelines. Therefore, an infill environmental analysis was required uh, and is attachment number two in your agenda packets. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so the parcel is currently developed with a single family home that will be demolished for the construction of the proposed project. Uh, the project site consists of two parcels with a lot area of approximately 0.59 acres which equates to about 25,861 square feet. Uh, the lot is rectangular in shape and is generally flat. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the subject property's zoning designation is multifamily residential R3, and the site is surrounded by multifamily residential zones and developments. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, so the proposed project required the approval of a tentative track map and a development plan design review to allow the proposed building architecture and site layout. Uh, the site's general plan land use designation allows a maximum density of 20 units per acre. Based on, uh, based on the lot size, the maximum project density is 11.8 units per acre. Uh, the site layout consists of six, three-story uh, three units and five two-story units for an 11-unit townhome project. 
Uh, a single driveway is being proposed down the southerly portion of the project to provide vehicular access for the dwelling units uh, along this route. Um, also, a common open space is proposed approximately in the southeasterly and westerly portions of the development between, as you can see here, between buildings um, two and um, behind and building three. Um, the total common open space being provided uh, is 2,867 square feet. Uh, and, and the common open area space um, consists of a garden, an outdoor fitness area, uh, an outdoor lounge, and an outdoor barbecue area for all the residents to enjoy. Uh, the, um, so parking and circulation. So the part, uh, Baldwin Park Municipal Code section 153150 requires two parking spaces per unit and one space for every three dwelling units. Uh, a total of 22 parking spaces will be provided for this development. Uh, each unit will provide a two-car garage and an additional three spaces for guest parking. Uh, based on the requirements of the municipal code, the project is required to provide a minimum two-car garage uh, space per unit. Uh, the proposed project meets the parking requirements based on the Baldwin Park Municipal Code and a condition of approval um, was also included within the tentative track back requirements that uh, CCNRs, that a CCNR will state that parking or storage of any recreational vehicles is prohibited. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so the project pro uh, proposes a Spanish architectural style. Architectural features include a hip style roof um, with clay roof tiles. Uh, wall projections, stucco exterior with smooth stucco um, window trim finish, vinyl windows uh, varying in shapes, um, uh, wood shutters and arched recessed doors as well. Uh, the combination of materials and architectural variations reduce the scale and massing of the proposed structures. Uh, the HOA um, will be responsible for maintaining the exterior, exterior of the buildings, including the garage doors and roofs. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Oh, can we jump one more, David? Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, so the applicant is proposing two different floor plans, uh, each containing between three and four bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms. Uh, the dwelling units range from two to three stories uh, with an attached two-car garage. Uh, floor areas range from 1,424 square feet to 1,632 square feet of livable area. Um, let's see. So as you can see on here, um, units, this was going to be the first floor and second floor floor plan for units one through five. Uh, so units one through five uh, do have a floor area of 1,424 square feet. Um, with three bedrooms and two and a half bath. Um, next slide, please. Uh, let's see. And here we have the um, north and south elevations for building number two that are um, more towards the rear of the development. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, and so for that building, building number two, we have here units uh, six, seven, and eight. Uh, unit six, seven, and eight are going to have a floor area of 1,632 square feet. Um, it's going to have four bedrooms and two and a half bath. Uh, and this is um, one of the buildings that is going to be three stories as well. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, and then the final building that will be seen off of Ramona Boulevard. Um, this one is also going to be three stories. Uh, next slide, please, David. And this is the first and second floor plan for building number three. Uh, and we have the final units, which are nine, 10, and 11. Uh, so the floor area for these three units is 1,546 square feet uh, with three bedrooms and two and a half bath. Uh, next slide. And we, here we have the uh, floor plan for the third floor of building number three. Um, okay, and so uh, next slide, please, David. 
Oh, sorry. Okay, so noticing requirements. Uh, so I noticed a public hearing was posted on the City of Baldwin Park's website on uh, Thursday, April 15th and April uh, 21st. Uh, the public hearing notices were also mailed on those same days to all property owners within a 300 foot radius of the subject site and staff did not receive any letters of concern um, regarding this development. Uh, so to conclude, staff does recommend that the Planning Commission adopt resolution PC 21-05 approving ten tentative track map 83328 and PR 20-33 to facilitate uh, this residential development. And the applicant is also present for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Moza. Um, commissioners, any questions of staff? All right, seeing no questions. Um, at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the public hearing. Uh, Ron, have we received any communication from the public in regards to this, um, in regards to this matter? Uh, no, we have not, uh, uh, Chairman. Thank you very much, Ron. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, commissioners, any questions of the applicant or of staff? Seeing no questions, I am going to go ahead and make a motion uh, to adopt resolution PC 21-05 entitled a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Baldwin Park, approving a tentative track map to to consolidate two existing single family lots with the creation of 11 attached condominium townhomes and with one common lot within the R3 multifamily residential zone pursuant to table 152.10 of the city's municipal code, location 13266 Ramona Boulevard, applicant Leo Wu, Artfield Inc., case number PR 20-33 and TM-83328. Do we have a second? I will second. Is that Commissioner Garrido? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much, Commissioner. Uh, Ron, would you please call roll? Yes, Commissioner Garrido? Yes. Vice Chair Borges? Yes. Chairman Sens? Yes. Motion um, is a uh, motion passes 3 0. Um, congratulations. So we're going to go ahead and move on. Uh, to uh, item number three, a request for consideration to subdivide one lot into seven, into six, seven lots within the R3 multifamily residential zone for the construction of five, six, attached three-story residential condominium townhome units and one common lot pursuant to table 152.10 in the city's municipal code, location 4437 Stewart Avenue, applicant Brian Chan for uh, EGL Associates, case number PR 18-76, and TTM 83377, uh, Mr. Ron Garcia. Thank you, Chairman. Um, as indicated, uh, this, re this report represents the request for consideration of a tentative parcel map to subdivide the lot into seven lots uh, for the creation of six condominium townhome uh, units with one common area uh, pursuant to the city's municipal code. Uh, the project is exempt from the provisions of CEQA pursuant to Article 19, uh, Section 15303, and no further environmental analysis uh, is required uh, per the exemption. Uh, notices of public hearing were posted at City Hall um, and also posted on the city's website uh, on Thursday, May 13th, uh, and did not receive any notices of concern uh, regarding the proposed project. Next slide. The parcel is currently developed with the single family home that will be de uh, demolished uh, for the uh, uh, proposed project. Again, you have Stewart Avenue, and then you have Los, An Los Angeles to the south, and then you have Belgate Street um, uh, on the west. And again, uh, the site includes one single family uh, structure. Next slide. The subject property's general plan land use designation is multifamily uh, residential, uh, which is consistent with the property's multifamily residential R3 zoning designation. Uh, the property is one parcel with a lot area of approximately 0.42 acres, uh, which consists of 18,600 square feet in size. Uh, the lot shape is rectangular in shape and is generally uh, flat. 
The surrounding uses um, uh, include single family residences uh, to the east, multifamily apartment units to the north, single family and multifamily uh, units to the south, and single family residences uh, to the west. All right, next slide, please. The proposed project again requires uh, the approval of a tentative map uh, and a development plan design review uh, to allow for the proposed building and architecture and site layout. The site plan uh, layout consists of six three story attached residential units. A single driveway is proposed down the southerly portion of the project to provide vehicular access to the dwelling units. Again, the site is 0.42 acres in site and is relatively flat. Uh, the, and again, the site contains uh, one single family home. Uh, common open space is proposed approximately in the center uh, and rear area of the development between units two uh, and unit three uh, and unit six uh, and includes a combined uh, total of approximately 1,536 square feet of common area space. The common open space areas include decorative pergola, barbecue area, a dog run area with picnic tables. Uh, condition of, appro of approval requires city um, uh, landscape plans prepared by a landscape architect for review and approval. In addition, uh, per the municipal code, the project does require two parking spaces per unit and one guest parking space for every three dwelling units. A total of 14 parking spaces will be provided. Each unit will have a two car garage and a total of two guest parking spaces uh, for the project site. Uh, based on the requirements, uh, the project does provide a minimum uh, of the required uh, parking per the code. Uh, a condition of approval in, uh, includes the CCNRs to include uh, in the track map that parking of storage of recreational vehicles, trailers, boats uh, are prohibited. Uh, in order to uh, allow the guest parking spaces uh, to be utilized for guest uh, parking purposes. Next slide, please. The applicant is proposing two different floor plans, each containing between three and four bedrooms uh, with three bathrooms. All of the dwelling units are three stories with an attached two car garage on the first floor. Floor areas range from 3,000 uh, 44 square feet to 3,188 square feet of livable area. Uh, again, this slide shows the first floor uh, of the uh, of type A, which includes a two-car garage, a bedroom, uh, an accessible bathroom, and then a staircase leading up to the second floor. Next slide. And here's the second floor. It includes a bedroom, your kitchen, your dining, living room. Um, and storage area. Next slide. And finally, uh, the third floor consists of a den, a walk-in closet, a bedroom, bathroom, uh, as well as the, um, uh, the staircase leading to the third floor. Next slide. And here's the first floor for building type uh, uh, B and C. And again, you see the uh, two-car garage, um, with the staircase leading up to the, uh, the second floor, uh, and it also includes a den. Next slide. And here on the second floor, you see the uh, bedroom, bathroom, uh, living area, dining room, and kitchen. And third floor. Next slide, please. And here on the third floor, uh, you have a bedroom, bath, uh, walk-in closet with the bedroom, and also a bath. Next slide. So the proposed project uh, here proposes Spanish architectural design. Uh, architectural features include hip style roof with concrete as tile material, exposed wood rafter tails, wood corbels and paneling, uh, stucco exterior with smooth stucco window trim finish, vinyl windows uh, with varying shapes, wood shutters and decorative wrought iron planter boxes. The combination of materials and architectural variation reduces the scale and massing of the proposed structures. And finally, the HOA will be responsible for maintaining the exteriors of the buildings, including the garage doors and the roofs. And again, here this slide shows the proposed architectural design um, 
for building type A. And again, this includes the southeast and northwest uh, elevations. Next slide. And this is building type B and C, which also includes southeast and northwest elevations. And you can see the articulation that's been uh, proposed on these buildings uh, to, um, to complement that architectural Spanish um, design. Next slide. So as indicated, uh, one of the requirements uh, for the development is a track map. Um, the applicant is proposing, again, to subdivide the lot into seven lots. Uh, six um, of those uh, include the condominium units and the common area uh, for circulation, guest parking, and, and common open space. The common areas uh, will be fully maintained privately by an established HOA. Uh, further CCNRs will be required as part of the project as indicated to address any ongoing maintenance and upkeep of, of, of the site, including common areas, driveways, walls, and landscaping. Uh, the site's general plan, land use designation of uh, multifamily residential allows a maximum of 20 units per acre. Uh, the proposed project density will be 14.05 uh, units per acre. And based on the lot size, the project density is 8.5 units per, per acre. Um, and as you can see with this development, they are proposing a total of six units. Next slide. So in conclusion, uh, staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve resolution 2107, approving PR 1876 and tentative track map 83377. That concludes staff's presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, the applicant is also available for any questions. Thank you so much, Ron. Um, commissioners, any questions of staff? Seeing no questions, um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the uh, public hearing. Ron, have we received any communications from the public in regards to this matter? No, Chairman, we did not receive any uh, requests for comment regarding this project. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so at this time, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, commissioners, any questions of staff or of the applicant? Seeing no questions, I now uh, I move to adopt a resolution PC 21-07 entitled the resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Baltimore Park, approving a tentative track map to subdivide one lot into seven lots to facilitate the construction of six attached condominium townhome units with one common lot within the R3 multifamily residential zone pursuant to table 152.10 of the city's municipal code location 4437 Stewart Avenue, applicant Brian Chen for EGL Associates, case number PR 18-76 and TTM-83377. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you very much, Commissioner Borkis. Uh, Ron, do you mind calling roll? Yes, uh, Commissioner Garrido. Yes. Commissioner Borkis. Yes. Chairman Sands. Yes. Uh, resolution PC 21-07 adopted 3-0. Thank you so much. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and move on to item number four, a request for Planning Commission's consideration of a conditional use permit to modify an existing conditional use permit to allow an alcohol license type 21 beer, wine, and distilled spirits in conjunction with a grocery store zone pursuant to table 153-070.020 and section 153.120, part two of the city's municipal code, applicant Compass Commercial Group, grocery outlet 4249 uh, Main Avenue, Mr. Ron Garcia. Yes, uh, Associate Planner Melissa Chippers will be providing the presentation. Great, thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you. Okay, so again, before you is a request for consideration for approval of a conditional use permit to modify an existing conditional use permit to allow alcohol sales, an alcohol license type 21, beer, wine, and distilled spirits in conjunction with the grocery store at 4249 Main Avenue, currently the grocery outlet. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, on January 27th, uh, 2016, the Baldwin Park Planning Commission approved a conditional use permit to allow off-site sales of beer and wine, a type 20 alcohol license in conjunction with a grocery store. Uh, next slide, please. 
So on behalf of the grocery outlet, Compass Commercial Group submitted a request for modification of the, of the existing conditional use permit to increase from a type 20 to a type 21 alcohol license of, uh, of off sale um, alcohol sales pursuant to section 153.120.050 subsection A of the Baldwin Park Zoning Code uh, any establishment, business, or facility that does not currently sell alcoholic beverages or request an increase of alcohol license type is required to obtain a conditional use permit. And a type uh, 21 license will allow the operator retail sales of beer, wine, and distilled spirits. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the applicant, applicant is not proposing to modify the existing site or floor plan. Uh, but staff did want to make a note um, of a minor change to the staff report. Uh, the staff report sta uh, states that the applicant um, was not going to modify their hours of operation, which is currently seven days a week uh, from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, but the applicant is now requesting to extend their hours of operation by one hour, having them operate seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, if approved, the staff will revise the resolution of approval approving the time modification. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so to conclude, staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve resolution PC21-06, approving CP21-03. Uh, and the applicant is present for any questions as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Melissa. Uh, commissioners, any questions of staff? Uh, seeing no questions, I'm going to go ahead and open up the public hearing. Uh, Ron, have we received any communication from the public in regards to this matter? Uh, no, we have not, uh, Chairman Sense. Great. Thank you so much. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, commissioners, any questions of staff or of the applicant? Seeing no questions, I'm going to go ahead and make a motion to adopt resolution PC21-06 as amended, uh, entitled a resolution of the Planning Commission to modify an existing conditional use permit to allow alcohol license type 21 beer, wine, and distilled spirits in conjunction with a grocery store pursuant to table 153.070.020 and section 153.120 part two of the city's municipal code. Location 4249 Main Avenue, Applicant Compass Commercial Group, Grocery Outlet, case number CP21-03. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you very much, Commissioner Borges. Mr. Ron Garcia, will you please call roll? Yes. Commissioner Garrido? Yes. Commissioner Borges? Yes. Chairman Sands? Yes. Thank you. Uh, motion passes 3-0. Resolution PC21-06 as amended. Congratulations, Grocery Outlets. At this time, we're going to go ahead and move on uh, to uh, item number five, a request for consideration of a recycling facility within the industrial commercial zone pursuant to table 153.050.020 in the city's municipal code, location 3026 Fraser Street, applicant Walter Gonzalez Reyes, case number CP892. Uh, this item was continued from, from the September 23rd, 2020 Planning Commission meeting. Mr. Ron Garcia. Uh, thank you. Uh... Uh, Chairman Sands, before we start, I just want to confirm I, um, that uh, we do have the applicant present before I give the presentation. I, I, I'm not, uh, Mark, if you can let in uh, Blanca. Can you hear me? Oh, okay, good. Is this Ezekiel? Yes, uh, sorry okay. about the other name. It's, it's been changed. Uh, I think uh, my wife used it just uh, briefly. Okay, <laughs> perfect. My Zoom account, but um, I didn't have a chance to. I didn't notice that it was a different. Yeah, I'm here for any questions. I'm not the applicant, I'm the uh, designer. I did the architectural plans and the uh, uh, architectural renderings for the uh, applicant. Uh, I understand he's uh, also here um, present. Thank you, Ron. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, 
Hold on one, uh, if you could just bear with me just a minute. Uh, hold on one second. Seven, let's see. Thank you, bear with me. <laughs> Just gonna set up the screen here. All right, perfect. Okay, thank you uh, uh, everyone. So um, this application again uh, represents a request from the Planning Commission for a recycling facility. Uh, if you remember Planning Commissioners, this item was continued uh, from originally from the August 26, 2020 meeting um, uh, uh, for consideration, um, uh, essentially provided direction to the applicant and recommended revising the project site. Um, it was also then uh, continued from the September 23rd, 2020 Planning Commission meeting to a date uncertain uh, in order to allow the applic applicant to continue working uh, uh, with staff. Uh, so uh, at the August 26, 2020 meeting, the Planning Commission uh, recommended revising the project site. Um, and that was to work with staff to explore relocating the existing Fraser Avenue driveway uh, to Garvey Avenue. Um, and just to uh, go over what, how the proposed project, I just wanna briefly go over um, the request uh, since a considerable amount of time has taken place since then, just to familiarize the commissioners again of the proposal. Um, next slide, please. So as mentioned, the, the site is zoned industrial commercial, uh, industrial commercial uh, and is consistent with the commercial industrial general plan land use designation. Uh, vehicular access uh, to the site would be provided via uh, Fraser Street. And the subject property uh, is approximately about 14,328 square feet. Uh, the property uh, is currently an auto repair shop. Since this was uh, first presented to the Planning Commission, uh, it's my understanding that the auto shop has uh, since uh, been phased out uh, on the property. The surrounding land uses uh, include single family residences, uh, the I-10 freeway, industrial buildings, and uh, 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 um, and finally industrial buildings. Next slide. So per the municipal code, uh, no more than one recycling facility can be permitted within a radius of 3,000 feet uh, and requires planning commission approval. Uh, the applicant currently operates two recycling facilities in the city of LA and collect collectively has almost 20 years of experience in running and managing recycling facilities. So the applicant has submitted a certified radius map, verifying that the recycling facility adheres to those, uh, those standards. Um, next slide. And again, this is just a basic floor plan um, of the facility, um, which would allow for a drop off um, of recycling materials such as cans, uh, glass, uh, um, uh, aluminum cans and glass. Next slide. And again, as you remember, um, these are the containers that are going to be located at the site um, for storage uh, of the recycling material. Um, and just to, as a reminder, uh, the applicant is proposing two full-time employees during the operating hours of 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday uh, and 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Sunday. Um, and again, those materials are going to consist of aluminum, uh, glass, and plastic bottles. Next slide. So this is a, a rendering uh, of the site. Um, since the, the Planning Commission uh, in August, the applicant has revised the fencing as recommended by the Planning Commission uh, to provide a more decorative uh, type style of, uh, of fencing. So it includes wrought iron with the uh, uh, decorative uh, 
a solid base um, along the exterior of the site. Next slide. And again, this is just kind of an aerial view of what uh, that would, um, what uh, the site um, will consist of with the, those modifications. And again, uh, just showing the decorative uh, uh, fencing uh, along the, the exterior of the site. Uh, David, if you can go back to the site plan earlier. Yes, there we go. Thank you, David. So again, as recommended by, by the Planning Commission, uh, at that time, there were some concerns of uh, except, uh, egress and, and egress to uh, the site. Uh, so what's occurred in working with uh, the Planning and Engineering Division um, is that they've relocated the 30-foot wide driveway uh, to provide more of a safe, uh, safer access uh, to the site, to and from, closer to the alley. Um, and uh, another modification is that, uh, that they're proposing to demolish the, uh, the canopy that was at the center of the, the site in order to allow for uh, vehicular uh, uh, access uh, within the site and, and proper exiting um, to the site. Um, we, the applicant did explore with an engineering staff. Um, one of the comments from the commissioners was to possibly relocate the drive aisle to Garvey Avenue. Uh, we explored that. Unfortunately, um, the engineering staff did not recommend uh, that option in that it, uh, it uh, created a safety concern because of a blind spot, especially for those vehicles. So if you imagine car exiting off of Garvey, uh, there is a blind spot to the east of oncoming traffic. Um, so it was not recommended by staff uh, to uh, create an alternative uh, egress and ingress. Um, so alternatively, the applicant worked with staff to relocate the driveway on Fraser closer to the alley in order to, to provide a much safer um, access uh, to the site. Um, uh, all in all, the, the project um, has been revised to improve the overall circulation. Uh, the project proposes again to remove the canopy and modify the existing driveway. And based on those changes um, made to the project, the applicant has made an effort to address those, those concerns uh, as requested uh, by the Planning Commission. Um, in conclusion, uh, staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve uh, resolution PC 2020, approving the conditional use permit. Um, Staff is present for any questions. In addition to uh, planning staff, uh, the public works director is available for any comments or questions uh, of the commission, uh, as well as the applicant, uh, uh, Ezekiel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ron. Um, and I, I think I'm just gonna make the comment. I, it's def definitely a significant improvement and I appreciate the applicant for um, Kind of taking our, our recommendations and, and reworking it's it's definitely a significant um improvement and I, I i'm happy um and then also sam thank you for joining the call um, i appreciate it um and thank you for collaborating with both planning and the applicant to find um, um like to, to make this to make this a reality um but um commissioners is there any questions of staff no i mean I, I, Go ahead. Ed. Go ahead. I, uh, thank you, Commissioner Garrido. I just second what Chairman Sign says. Yeah, about uh, great presentation and, and changes. Go ahead, Commissioner Garrido. Uh, I was just going to say, yeah, I mean, now it, it, it looks, I mean, it looks better if they're going to push back that, you know, driveway a little bit more, obviously you only have, you know, one stop sign there. Um, and that's coming from Garvey. Uh, you know, the other stop sign would be at actually the off ramp of the freeway, I believe. So at first it seemed kind of very, you know, just like those cars usually come zooming around that, you know, that corner there and depending on how much traffic, but I mean, if you pushed it back a little bit more, 
I think it makes more sense now than it did originally. So yeah, I like it. Thank you very much, commissioners. Um, so at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the public hearing. Ron, have we received any communications from the public in regards to this matter? Yes, Chairman Senza, we did receive one uh, uh, request for public comment from uh, John Reels. Let me just uh, uh, um, see if I can get him through now. Hold on one second. Sure, thank you, Ron. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Rios. Yes. Yes. Uh, you have three minutes regarding the uh, conditional use permit request for a recycling facility. You can begin. Well, one of the reasons is that it's very close to the neighborhood. We that are, you know rats and stuff again. Uh, you know, with recycling, that's what happens. You know, and in the community right there. I don't think they realize or, or they they said that they sent them notices. There was a public, uh, you know, to get involved with it, but I don't think they did because basically most of the people that live there are retired people, you know, and, and it's a very quiet neighborhood, you know. But putting a recycler where you want, you guys want it, it's brings homeless it brings uh, a bad environment for for the area we have a good area right there we don't want to ruin it you know that gentleman that was running in and out you know a lot of times we had to call up and code enforcers would come on the weekends and stop their sales because they, they have no permits the, is that the same person that's trying to get the permit I don't think he's responsible, you know, when you try to do something underhanded. Okay, you know, and it's a bad area to put a recycling man. Why don't you guys put it behind uh, Food for Less? This, the building's still there. Why don't they do it over there? Nobody's using it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rios. Thank you, Ron. Um, do we have any uh, any other uh, requests for comment? No, Chairman Sands, we do not. Great. Um, so, um, commissioners, do you have any questions of the applicant or staff? Seeing none, um, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, and I just have a question, uh, question, Ron, um, in regards to, to these um, conditional use permits, do we have anything? I mean, it, it seems um, and it seems like uh, something that the, the um, applicant would just take upon himself to ensure. But does, does the conditional use permit require any um, like I don't know what to call it, like <laughs> rodent mitigation protocols. Like, I, I mean, like, is there anything that we can um, plug into the conditional use permit to ensure that um, there, I don't know, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't know the statistics on, on recycling facilities and, and, and um, attracting rodents, but I imagine that it, it seems like it's very much possible 
Um, so is, is that something, I mean, I don't know if a recycling facility is, is regulated under like the purview of the health department. Like, I, I guess what, what can we do to ensure that um, we are protecting the residential units um, surrounding um, the, the site? Yes, uh, thank you, um, uh, Chairman Sands. Those are really good, that's a good question. As you recall, and I apologize, I should have made reference to that in, in the presentation, um, but I'm referring, I wanna to refer to um, a page, it begins on page uh, three of, uh, of the conditional use permit resolution. But be, um, uh, because the way these uses operate, uh, staff did um, provide and button up some, um, some conditions in order to mitigate those potential issues. Uh, just for the record, I'd like to just read those uh, that are read those conditions um, from the resolution. So, for example, um, I'll start with condition number uh, ten: uh, the site shall be patrolled once per day to ensure cleanliness and security. Uh, condition eleven: all recyclable materials shall be stored in containers or in a mobile unit uh, vehicle and no material shall be left outside of the containers when attendant is not present. Condition 12, any fluid shall be disposed of in any watertight container. The facility attendant shall have a five gallon supply of water during all times of operation to dilute any residual fluid mixture. Fluids may not be dumped on the parking lot. Condition 13, no power driven processing equipment shall be employed. Condition 14, the facility shall be maintained free of vermin, litter, and any other undesirable materials and will be swept at the end of each collection day and cleaned weekly. Uh, condition 15, if the CUP expires, uh, the recycling facility shall be removed from the site on the day of the following permit expiration. So uh, all in all, uh, these, as, as you can see, the conditions that I have read uh, essentially help mitigate those types of uses. I've included these uh, conditions in here based on my experience working with, uh, uh, with these types of uses, recycling facilities, in order to, for it to operate um, in a way that is um, uh, uh, works symbiotic with the adjacent uh, 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 uses. Um, they, these conditions, uh, for example, if there's an issue with the uh, uh, of any of these issues that I've I've indicated, code enforcement could use this conditional use permit as a way to make sure that the site is being operated per the approval of the conditional use permit. So hopefully, I've been able to answer that question to you. Uh, the applicant has accepted, and they have agreed upon all the conditions of approval, as indicated at the initial planning commission meeting, um, as well as uh, tonight. Great, thank you so much, Ron. Um, and I, I think um, just I'm going to clarify um, point number 17. So, um, if for whatever reason this applicant um, fails to to upkeep the site or, or is in breach of the conditional use permit after uh, within a year or at at the the year anniversary, um, if if any of these conditions aren't met, then this uh, conditional use permit would become null and void. So uh, condition 17 essentially means that they have one year to, to start the uh, operation. So if they don't do that within a year, the, the CUP approval expires. Uh, and the uh, Mr. City Attorney can confirm this. Uh, for example, if, this, if they were to repeatedly uh, violate the conditions of approval under the CUP, the city can uh, initiate a revocation uh, of the conditional use permit. And that is per the municipal code. Got it. Um, I guess I'll let the city attorney come in to, um, to confirm. Yes, that is absolutely correct. In fact, yes, we can call them in for different kinds of hearings, compliance, and otherwise, whenever we deem appropriate. But um, uh, certainly we could do that on a regular basis and, and uh, uh, at the time of one year. Um, as Ron says, if there are significant violations, uh, we can um, uh, revoke that permit. Great, thank you very much, Robert and Ron. 
Um, obviously, I hope that <laughs> we don't come to that. And I hope that this is a very successful business. I think that um, um, doing whatever we can, and I, I think I've been made this point many times um, in our meetings that uh, I, I, I really like this this use. I think that it's important in protecting our environment. And um, this is one little step that we can do in our city to ensure that that we're protecting um, our, our, our environment. So I'm really happy for this this uh, this use, obviously, um, but I also am uh, want to be respectful of the surrounding uses. So um, I really ask that the applicant uh, ensures that the site is is kept um, as clean as possible and, and um, to to respect all members of the community. Um, so with that being said, I think I have closed the public hearing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a motion. Uh, to adopt resolution PC 2020, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Baldwin Park, adopting the findings of fact and approving a conditional use permit to allow for a recycling facility pursuant to Table 153.050.020 in the City's Municipal Code, Location 3026, Fraser Street. Applicant Walter Gonzalez Reyes, case number CP892. Do we have a second? I will second. Thank you very much, Commissioner Garrido. Um, Mr. Ron Garcia, will you please call roll? Yes, Commissioner Garrido. Yes. Commissioner Borges. Yes. Chairman Sands. Yes, um, motion passes 3-0. Resolution PC 2020 has been adopted. Congratulations, um, and thank you very much for your patience. Um, and then uh, I guess we're gonna go ahead and move on to reports of officers. Ron, is there anything? Um, Anything you need to, to convey? Or? Yes. Um, so I just want to remind the, the planning commission of two study sessions. I know you've been, I've been bombarding your emails with reminders of a joint planning commission, really important dates for the month of June. Uh, Mal and I and the consultant have been working diligently with our consultant on the uh, downtown specific plan and also the housing element. Uh, so on June 9th uh, will be a presentation of the, draft of the downtown specific plan on june 9th that's a joint city council planning commission that will be done via uh, via zoom and then moving on we have a housing element uh, study session again with the council to present the draft uh, uh housing element uh, before that is sent to the state for review uh and, and comment um, and that'll be june 23rd at six o'clock um I, I, that is after the June 15th, that's like the big day. Um, I will be sure to um, to advise you of whether that meeting is gonna take place via Zoom or it's gonna consist of a hybrid meeting where it's via Zoom or in person in the council chambers. Uh, so right now um, that has not been solidified. So I'll make sure to uh, keep you updated on that. But uh, for sure on June 9th, it'll be a, a, a Zoom meeting uh, for that uh, study session. Um, there's one more item. Yeah, I think. And, and lastly, I just wanted to, um, I know we haven't had a planning commission meeting, but I wanted to thank uh, Commissioner Edith Flores. Um, she did resign uh, from the planning commission, but wanted to thank her for her years of service um, that she's dedicated uh, to the planning commission. So I want to wish her well. Um, and uh, unfortunately, didn't have, could, did not have the opportunity to have her present to thank her, uh, but I wanted to use this opportunity uh, to thank her for her service. And that's all I have on on for uh, reports. Thank you very much, Ron. Um, um, so I guess I just want to thank everybody um, for, for tonight's meeting and for everybody's patience. Um, it was a little bit of a, we had a lot of items, so thank you. Um, <laughs> and so Rod, Melissa, Robert, Sam, Mark, David, um, commissioners, um, thank you guys so much um, uh, for tonight. Um, commissioners, any any comments before we adjourn tonight's meeting? Uh, the Chairman Signs, Commissioner Garrido, God bless you and the kids. Uh, you know, I know it's, I, I'm over here. Uh, you know, Mr. Mom, <laughs> it's not easy. So you guys take care. You know, sending blessings your way. Uh, certainly, everybody, take care, you guys. Um, um, thank you so much, Commissioner Borges. Um, so. Um, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and make a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting at 8.03 p.m. Uh, do we have a second? I will second your motion. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you very much, <laughs> Commissioner Garrido. Uh, Mr. Ron Garcia, will you please call roll? Yes, Commissioner Garrido. Yes. Commissioner Borges. Yes. 
Chairman Sands. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, motion passed three zero. Tonight's meeting has been adjourned at eight oh four p.m. Uh, Viva Baldwin Park. Viva Baldwin Park. Park. <laughs> Viva Baldwin Park. Viva Baldwin Park. Viva Baldwin Park. Right. Take care, everybody. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Ron. Bye. Thanks for all you do and the and the planning uh, staff. Thank you. Thank you, guys.